The following program is hosted by immature, irreverent, obnoxious, and often disgusting young men. Listener discretion is advised. This time on Nude Clan, <laughs> ye are not even fit unto graft. Shall we play a game? <laughs> Welcome <laughs> to another episode of Nude Clan, the video game podcast that slaughters video game quotes. I am your host, Caleb Joyce. I am Joe. I'm A4. And uh, the quote, I think, is, you are unfit even... Oh, what is it? <laughs> you are unfit even unto graft, or something Good similar to that. It's a guy who grafts dead warriors onto his body, like some kind of psycho. Um, is that um the first major boss, or like Stormvale or whatever? Yeah, he was my second, but yeah. Uh, he didn't think you were fit to even graft onto his body. So that's kind of fucked up. So Elden Ring, big time game. Everybody looking forward to it. Basically the biggest game of the year that I'm even aware of. Um, it sold a shitload, too. It's like one of the highest selling games by like dollar count or something lately. I forget what I read. Well, yeah. I just feel like this is the first time in a while, I guess since the last God of War and maybe the first Horizon game where it was like everybody I know and in our little network of people who listen to the show and stuff like that, every fucking person is playing this. Yeah, I mean... Ironic considering it also killed Horizon 2. I'm looking at this article from July 15th and it says they sold 13.4 million units. That's high. In like like six months, which is a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. So yeah, it's Big big hit. It's a very popular game. That's more than 15 by like a lot. <laughs> it, it, FF15, yeah. yeah. It all it only took us like 6 months to get to review it. Yeah. Took I mean, I didn't beat it till I want to say the end of May, so Yeah. Like it takes a while. It's a big game, especially yeah. if you uh don't look anything up. And when we review if you don't get anything up and you're trying to explore as much as you can. Because, I mean, you can beat this game really fast if you want to, and you're really good. But, um, I mean, I put like 110 hours into this, just kind of exploring the map and like trying to do basically everything that I wanted to do in this game. Yeah. In terms of content. I put almost 200 hours into this game. It was like Jeez. 190. Well, you, you, you didn't use summons, so. No, no. I imagine some bosses took them a lot longer for you there than were, they did for me. There were probably five or six bosses that took me over four hours each. And one yeah. of them probably took me about 15 hours to beat. Like, no joke. Yeah, how's that, uh, how's that Melania? <laughs> I haven't beaten her. Oh, okay. I got to her, and I fought her for about an hour, and I said, well, I could probably beat her in about five hours, but I could also probably go beat the game. And so I did that instead. Yeah. Um, I hope you're not going after those puffballs, because I ate them all. No. Okay, good. I would apologize if you were. Uh, but anyway, uh, sorry, no, puffballs aside, um, <laughs> speaking so of balls. So I guess for those of you who are living under a rock somehow or maybe listening to this in the future, Elden Ring 2022 video game developed by From Software, published by Namco Bandai for all major consoles and PC, uh, released back in February, I want to say, right? February? I think so, yeah. Yeah. And basically took the video game world by storm as... Uh, the new souls like i mean it's like it's, it's elden seki like, souls born that's the series no i know that but like this game specifically it's not a souls game like it's not in the soul series but like this game content wise and tone wise is kind of like from soft's greatest hits all rolled into one there's kind of a little bit of everything in here you got like dark souls ish areas you got bloodborne areas you've got like a few sekiro areas yeah, you got some secondary got, like, elements. You can crouch. There's like yeah. stealth in the game. There's a jump button. 
Yeah, that's something that the souls. I mean, they they have jumps, but like you jump attack. That's something that's kind of like a carryover. So their games they kind of evolve um, over time. Whenever they create another one of these souls, like or Elden Seki Soulsborne, um, <laughs> I really liked. Uh, I really liked. I think it was Roxo's. Um, quote for the game he said it's like uh breath of the wild but for men yeah uh this yeah, is I, I, there's a lot of comparisons to be made to breath of the wild and i don't think they're unfounded um this it is, is basically just breath of the wild but way harder and with way better graphics yeah this is like a, kind of more going on honestly uh at least in, in terms of like the legacy dungeons yeah uh this is it's it's kind of what all a lot of the open world games do there's a lot of collecting on the map there's a lot of harvesting stuff um, but it does it in a, in a soul's way, you know, it does it in kind of like the old soul's way where you can just grind out certain stuff on certain enemies, um, go fight certain dudes to get your items built up. Like when you know an enemy drops a certain thing, you can go fight them and try to get the drop. Um, this game is, it's also massive. It's fucking huge. Like, uh, it's huge and it doesn't, it like, it kind of hides it for a while. But as you just discover more of the map and you're like, how much bigger does this map get? And it just keeps going and going and going. It's like, like in layers, they like reveal how, how fucking huge this map is. Yeah. And it's also interesting because it's similar to God of War in, in that it, uh, not only is it large map wise, but there's a lot in each area of the map. So like, if you remember God of War, um, 2018, you know, you'd come to this little island, and then it would be, you know, it would be maybe 500 feet by 500 feet. But there's, like, a good hour's worth of content to find in that island. You know, there'd be, like, these little puzzles you have to do, and then there's, like, a little mini fight that you have to take part in. And there's, like, a bunch of stuff kind of crammed into one little area. And I feel like Elden Ring kind of had that uh, going forward it's as very, well. It's very content-dense. Like, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of, like open areas where there's not a lot going on but like there's little tiny things here and there and when you do find like a settlement or a landmark generally there's probably like a lot of stuff to do in that area so to speak yeah um so it's a massively it's it's a really big open world um game uh yeah it, it's 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 Honestly, I think it's more. I I know everyone compares it to Breath of the Wild, which I haven't really played, so I can't say. I think it's more of a, a Dark Souls meets Oblivion, honestly, because there's I mean, a that, lot that can make sense too. There's a lot of dungeons that you can go find, and not all of them are super unique, and the enemies in it aren't always super unique. But there's a lot to do in the game. There's like uh, there's like hundreds of bosses in this game, which reminds yeah, me of Oblivion, a where it's and some like, of them are reused, but um, like the ones that are unique. And there's a lot of unique ones are really good fights, except for a few, except for a few. One in particular is maybe one of the worst boss fights I've ever done in my entire life. But um, just, yeah, the sheer amount of content, as as uh, Dead Islander says in the chat, this game is well worth $60. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can easily yeah. ring over 60 hours out of this game, no problem. And that's not even touching like the main like story stuff. It's just going off and exploring. Uh, it really shouldn't be a surprise. It shouldn't be a surprise how much of a no-brainer op open world Souls games should have been, but like it's it it's still kind of baffling how well it works. Yeah, I was kind of skeptical for a minute um, when I was seeing some of the images, you know, riding horses and stuff like that. I was like, ah, are they going to turn this into like every other open world game? But I had and faith. It kind of is, but like it, it it's is, but it's got Souls boss fights in it everywhere. Yeah. So it's amazing for that. And the exploration is insane. Like just the the first castle alone. Like Dude, Stormvale is like the highlight, I think. Cause it's just so intricate, like in terms of its its design. And it's got that like Stormvale almost feels like an entire Souls game in and of itself in like one area. Because it's got all those little tiny nooks and crannies that lead back to earlier areas and it's all sort of interconnected and stuff. It's really smartly built. Um, but then when you realize that that's just one major legacy dungeon in a giant fucking map filled with little crypts and other legacy dungeons, it's like, it, it blows your mind. Yeah. Um, there's a lot in here. Uh, but and first... Then, and then you'll just get on like a fucking elevator in some like mausoleum and take and you'll take the longest elevator ride down. 
and, and then, then realize there's... there's another giant fucking area under the ground that you have to explore. Yep. You go fight. Yeah, it just, it just keeps, dude, the map just keeps going. It's insane. You get your di- giant deer. You got your giant scorpion down there. <laughs> all the all the necessities. Um. So before we dive into too much of this, is this though, a hentai game? Yeah. Sorry. Uh, it might as well be. Did you make your character look like you? That's a real question. A little bit, yeah. I kind of worked on it, and then his eyes were super close together, and I was like, nah, you know what, fuck it. He kind of has my hairline. He's balding. Um, but I didn't spend an hour and a half like I did on Demon Souls, and I showed Joe my guy on Demon Souls, and other than the fact that Joe said he looks like an Italian version of me, <laughs> I think I did pretty fucking good on that guy. <laughs> like He looks a lot like me, and didn't you think so? Like, as far as the game goes? As far as the game can go. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it's a Souls game, so you're not going to see your character's head ever, so it's not like it matters. Yeah, um, no. I'm glad, because the guy in this one is funky looking. But is it as good as the character creation in Tony Hawk Underground? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's it's pretty I'm, good. That's what I'm wondering. It's very... You can customize the shit out of it, yeah. Nice. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I tried for about 20 minutes, and I was like, fuck it, dude. It's like 5 in the morning. I need to play this game that I just spent a bunch of money on. So I'm going to play this game that I just spent a bunch of money on. But What class did you start as? A uh, thief like a jackass, and I just <laughs> built away from it entirely because that's a shitty class. I just wanted a right. bow. I wanted a bow to start with, and then I also realized the bow also sucks. Should have picked Samurai. Yeah, I was thinking. it. That was actually my second choice. But then I was like, you know, I just played this game. Ghost of Tsushima, and then I don't want to do ninja because like, is it was there there was a ninja class right? I don't think so. There's a yeah, samurai well. class, there's a thief class. Um, I guess thief is kind of. I, I don't know. I have to look at the other classes whenever I do new game plus. I should have done like warrior or swordsman. That was my second choice. I was about to go swordsman, but then I was like, let's do a weird one, and then I it sucked, so I just got a big sword. Um, but Elden Ring takes place. In a place called the land, the lands between, lands between. <laughs> so it's ruled over by a bunch of demigods. Um, there's a, it's basically like a political game going on, um, sort of kind. It does kind of feel Game of Thronesy in that regard. Like you can kind of feel the George Railroad Martin touch with that, I guess. <laughs> ding 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 ding. Um. Yeah, there's a bunch of like uh, previous rulers. I know the Queen Marika or whatever ruled it. At yeah, first. Queen Marika was like the big one, and then the shattering happened, and then everything kind of went to chaos overnight, basically. Yeah, right? and then once it shattered, um, every each the Elden of the, Ring, the the, the 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 ring itself, which the, is what the you're eponymous saying. Elden Ring shattered, and then everything kind of fell into chaos. Yeah, um, each of the people got like a portion of it, and then. Uh, Became shard bearers, as they're called. Yeah, yeah, and then the, the that's where they you get the great runes in the game. So the great rune is like a um, once you defeat a certain boss, like the mega bosses, the demigods, you get what's called a great rune, and it's an item that you can use, and it'll like up your stats. Um, once and there's another item it, you can use that'll like further boost the same stats or like add a different effect. Yeah, um, so it's you're kind of like going around and collecting pieces of the Elden Ring throughout the game as you're fighting um, as you're fighting all of these people. And I guess... Because you, do, you do find out eventually... Um, I mean, you're just kind of dumped into the world, and eventually, after running around for a bit and stopping at some of the, this game's bonfires called uh, Lost Graces, you meet up with a girl... Uh, what the fuck is her name? It's like Melina? Melina? It's like Melina, Melina and she she regard she tells you that you're maidenless, and for some reason you need a maiden in order to uh, complete your quest. And then, like after she forms a pact with you, you're also able to go to the Round Table Hold, which is this special area, sort of outside the bounds of the map, where a lot of major characters meet. It's also where you like level up all your weapons and stuff. Yeah, it's but the main hub. Meet with, uh, it's the main hub of the game. Like they, each the one hub. of these games have one. Uh, but uh, there you meet up with Gideon Offnir who is a knight who tells you about all of the different uh, shard bearers that you can go and defeat around the lands between. And you really only need to beat two of them in order to get the access to the end of the game. Uh, But I think there's like six or seven total, right? Yeah, something like that. How many of them did you beat? I think I beat most of them. 
Because after a while, I was super over level, and it's just like, well, I'm going to go get these other great runes just for the fun of it. Mm, I wish I would have done that. I know I left at least a few of them. Because, um, uh, like, I, I know I know, I beat Godric at Stormvale first, and then I beat uh, Lunala, what's her name? The the uh, Bayonetta? Or, R- R- Renala, Renala, yeah, the... the like the 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 woman at the magic school. But I think eventually um I found my way to the Volcano Manor and fought that guy. Uh I think his name is Rikard. The snake guy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. With the fucking crazy ass boss fight where they just give you a weapon that reaches across the entire map, basically. Yeah. It's a it's a yeah. spectacle fight that will also kick your ass. Yes. For me anyway. Um but I, I fought most of the bosses in the game, as far as I can tell. Yeah. Um, there's very few that I left, like, unturned, basically. I feel like I did a lot of the optional bosses, too. I, I did everything I could find, except for that duo fight. I never actually went back and took those guys out. Um, Which duo the, fight? The one, in one of the crypts, there's, like, the dudes that... Uh, the two knights that like one of the them Godskin f- duo, or...? No, no. Oh, I no, you're him. talking about the Crucible Knight duo fight. Yeah, that one I never actually yeah, I beat. I didn't find the Crucible Knight duo fight. Um, God, the hardest duo fight for me was definitely uh, there's, in like the underground area. You get to like a waterfall, and then you have to fight two of those giant fucking gargoyles that spout like poison everywhere. That was a gigantic pain in the ass. Oh yeah, those are that was tough. I I think the Godskin one was rough. Uh, there was one where it was like it was in a cave, and it was the Godskin duo, but it was like one after another, and that was the first time I ran into it. Um, but yeah, once I got um, the parries down on those, it was sexy. You you, f- you fight the gods can do at one point in the uh, in like the sky area, but then like when you beat them, like they come back to life one after the other again. So you basically have to beat them twice. Yeah, that was uh, rough. So that was a weird ass fucking fight. Yeah, that one was really rough. Um, mm. Yeah. So I my first boss though, I fought uh, Margit first. He was, uh... Yeah, I fought Margie first as well, um, and it only took me a few tries to get him down. Really, I took uh, me it took me like five hours to beat Margie, but I got his parries down to the point where when I beat him, I like I was barely touched. I beat his ass into the ground. Right. So I, I think I was using summons by that point. Like I might have had the wolves, and I was I was running with the wolves for a while in that game until basically I got the mimic, and then it's just like summon another me to fight all the bosses basically to help me fight all the bosses yeah one of the things i wanted to do with this game because with most of the other souls games what ends up happening is i'll just hold my biggest sword with both hands and then like do extra damage that way and i will only dodge roll and in this game i decided no if i isn't if there's an enemy i can get the timing down on and parry i'm going to learn i'm going to take the time to learn the parry and that's why right. it took me so fucking long to beat this game because I've got parries for days for these people now. Like, I, I spent so much time getting all of the little parries down. Like, the final boss, the first phase, I have almost all of his moves memorized. Like, I can parry. Yeah. I can backhand that little bitch all day long. Well, at least you can memorize the moves of that boss and, uh, you know, be within striking distance at any given point. Be within 10 miles. Within, yeah. Like, um, yeah. Of the fight. Well, uh, I, I I tried doing the parries and I just can't get them. I know there's a crucible night in the sky area that like you fight on like a like a balcony outside and then like I guess ideally you're supposed to beat him and then run up on like some debris that's hanging around in the sky and just sort of like platform your way to the next area. But I kept trying to fight him so many times that eventually I was just like fuck this. I'm just I'm just running away. <laughs> Uh, which was even funnier when I turned around. I'm like, he's never going to be able to chase me over here. And I saw him like climbing on the thing and trying to like jump down. I'm like, oh god! And just ran to the next grace. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, so it's it's typical Soulsborn uh, Elder Seki Soulsborn fashion, where the story is basically only told through lore, descriptions from items, oh, god. uh, sort of like fragmentary, uh like uh npc dialogue so yeah joe didn't play this so you you probably understand the story at least uh me yeah not a bit no i don't know i i understand the premise of it they they always line up a premise um i don't think the story i think it's i don't know it's hard because i spent it took me so long to beat it 
And so everything's so fucking spread out. But basically the idea is you go around, you have to kill the demigods, you're going to try to reforge the Elden Ring, but you can't... You can't, Zax, but you're, it's good for, you're good to go. You can eat it. What are you talking about? I'll allow it. On now, this podcast, uh, no, what do you say? Some thievery going on. <laughs> some squatter's rights of uh, sorts, I guess. Not really, but... Yeah. Um, Damn it. You want to go... You have to use the... It's like the the you have to go into the Erd tree, which is like the it's basically the uh you just feel it's like the tree. Yeah, it's like the world tree. It's the it's world huge. tree. Um there's you a lot of like anywhere you are in the map. There's a lot of Norse mythology in this game, or at least some. There's at least some. I, I remember there was more stuff that kind of reminded me of the Norse stuff, but that's definitely one of them. Uh so you go you have to enter the world tree because that's where you're able to repair the uh, Elden Ring. I'm pretty sure is that what happened. And then you um, weren't allowed in, so we fucking burned it to the ground. Yeah, you needed to get like some fire from this like giant, like this this like this giant's forge up in the frozen north area. Yeah, so you have a really long winded fight where you just hack at somebody's ankle for like <laughs> the fucking an hour. fire giant. Yeah, yeah, which um, was a cool ass fight. Um... Just because he's he's fucking massive and he's also doing like weird ass dodge rolls. Uh but yeah, then like you, you get the you get the fire to burn down the earth tree, which I guess also like will destroy the uh the, the round table hold as yeah, well. Yeah, because that's part of it. I think that's yeah, everything is kind of connected. Um to the earth tree. It's almost like I don't know. It, it, it kind of reminds me of uh, the round table kind of reminds me of that area in God of War where you like go between worlds, you know, because the round table is like an area aside from that. So like when you burn the tree, it kind of burns everything, even the areas outside. So it's yeah. kind of all reality itself from then on is basically on fire. Um, and then <sighs> shit, what else happens after that? Well, because you're really only doing it so you can get inside and basically, you know, fuck up the last boss. You can reforge the Elden Ring and basically, like, make everything right again. You mean the last nine bosses in a row, <laughs> like, ten feet yeah. apart from each other? Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's there's a, there's a an alternate ending part here where if you burn the, uh, if you gain the, the Frenzied Flame, I think, um, I think, oh, if you die. I, I only got Ronnie's ending. I don't know what the other endings are. What like. happened to I know the chick? Like a frenzied flame ending, but yeah. What happened to the chick in your game? Did she go away or did she burn away to burn the tree? Oh yeah, she burns away. Okay, He's that's what, Melina, right? Yeah, that's what happened in mine. I, there's an alternate thing where if you get the right stuff, she just abandons you. Oh, okay, that's what happens? But it's the frenzied flame ending, basically. Yes, I think so. Okay. I didn't look up the other endings. I just know there are alternate paths. Yes, and that's one yeah. of the things I looked up. Um, I intend to play this game again, by the way. It's just spoilers. Uh, I'm going to play this game at some point again, yeah, but not for a while, just because I put so much time into it. But I, I did look up like what the other endings require, if only because I just wanted to make sure, like, all right, I'm, I'm like 100 hours into this fucking game. I want to make sure I have everything to get the ending I want so that I can just do this. And I don't want to fuck it up, because these games are usually cryptic. So... But yeah, you basically then, you know, you burn down the air tree, you get you you go back to where the air tree is, you fight uh the original Elden Lord, uh Godfrey, who then becomes Hora Lu. It's yeah. just him with like a fucking <laughs> with no shirt. Yeah. Hora Lu is what we call your sister. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well <laughs> it's like she's the uh, sister and you go to and, uh and you fight um Lou. So what's the Lou and the the fucking Grinch? So Cindy Lou Who? Yeah, Cindy Lou Who. It's Cindy Lou Who's slutty cousin. <laughs> right. Horror Lou. Damn, she, Horror got, Lou. She, got, she got really nice packs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she puts she she packs on the pounds when she lifts. Yeah. Big, big girl. Pretty crazy that she can punch the ground and like make a bunch of shockwaves with it. Yeah, that guy took me forever, by the way. Uh the way I killed him is because I I used my ma- mega upgrade thing to fully upgrade my uh rivers of blood weapon yeah so i was rocking rivers of blood pretty much around the end of the game after my buddy tipped me off that it's a good weapon against uh melania because she's weak to uh to bleed melania yeah 
Yeah, so I, I was rocking Rivers of Blood basically to the end of the game until the final boss, the second phase of it, made me realize that that weapon, uh, that, that boss is not good against weapons that have uh, a reach less than a thousand feet. So <laughs> I disagree. Um, I upgraded Rivers of Blood to fight Horalu and I beat him, which was insanely hard. It was crazy. What right. I had to do is. Uh, I had to basically wait for him to do his big stomp move right at the very end, and I just whipped out the... I had to have enough... I had to sacrifice enough uh, healing to get my mana up and just do yeah. the Rivers of Blood like over and over and over and over and over and then like jump and dodge his shit. Um, and then I thought I was good to go because I was like, sweet, this is a good weapon for the final area. And then I go in this mono e mono straight up like sword fight with the final guy, and I'm like, okay, this is not sweet. This sword sucks for this kind of combat because right. I got the last guy's parries down like, like good. Like I am, Ooh. I am squared away against that fucking dude. I can fuck him up, and so I had to. I went and uh, I couldn't beat him, and so this is the first time I looked up. Second time I looked up anything ever in the game because the first time was I was in this fucking tunnel and I there's like a part where you have to run through lava. And I'm like, is there anything on the other side of this lava? Because like I'm walking through fucking lava here, and I With can't. The chariots, right? Yes, those fucking chariot missions. I hate yeah, I that shit. I never finished that dungeon. There's like five of them. There was one though with the lava where I was like, I cheated, and I was like, hey, I haven't looked anything up on this game. Is there an end? And the answer was yes, but I still couldn't get to it. So I was like, fuck oh, it, geez. I'm leaving. And then the next thing I looked up was okay, optional areas because I couldn't beat the game. I couldn't do it. And so Roxo was like, hey, did you ever explore the massive hole in the earth? And I was like, you know what? I didn't, actually. I went oh, over to it. it. No. Massive hole in the earth. I went over to it, and I was like, why didn't I go in this? It's pretty obvious where I go. And so I cleaned yeah, out because, that area. Because, um, because uh, whatever, what do you find down there again? Um, it's the, I think that's where the mimic and... Um, oh yeah, no, because I was trying to find a way like to the upper part of the underground area, like that you can't normally get to. Yeah, that's how you get and, to it. And uh, my one buddy was like, "You have to beat uh, what's his name, the dude on the horse, where we have the giant fucking the giant uh, fight with all the summons." Is it Radon? Yeah, the, uh, you have to beat Radon, and then like a fucking he summons like a comet that like hits the earth or something somewhere. Yes. And I'm like, am I supposed to know where that hit? And he, and my friend's like, it's, it'll be fairly obvious. And then I'm like, Oh, is it that giant hole in the ground where all the rocks are coming up in the sky? And he's like, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so, that yeah. fight I fought when he was nerfed too, by the way. And so I killed him. That was the one time I used summons in the whole game. And it wasn't Ash summons. Well, you're I just supposed to. Like yeah. the whole point of the Radon Fest is to summon all those dudes to help you out. Yeah, because like the the Earth, the the planet has this thing called Scarlet Rot, which is basically just COVID. Uh, but it's like COVID that only rots your brain, and so it kind of makes everybody go crazy. And this Radon guy is like a crazy demigod, and he they have this festival. He was trying to kill the Millennia, who's the person who like basically cursed the whole world with the Scarlet Rot. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, they have this festival every year where everyone like comes together to like try to kill Radon, and so I, I summoned like, a bunch of. That would be the coolest boss fight in the whole fucking game. It was you, awesome. You, you, go, you go down in this fucking uh, elevator, and it's just this giant field with a bunch of discarded swords. Looks like the fucking key, the Keyblade fucking graveyard from Kingdom Hearts, and there's a bunch of summon stones all over the place. And as he's, like, firing lasers and shooting comets at you, you just run around and summon, like, a bunch of the NPCs from the game, and they all help you fight this guy at the same time. Yeah, it and it's... such a cool fucking fight. It's like a big-ass dude on a tiny little horse, too. It's hilarious. Dude, it's game. great. Uh, oh, my God. The Radon fight is so much fucking fun. But like I said, when I beat it, it was super nerfed. And so I almost beat him without the summons twice. And then I was like, okay, this feels wrong to do without these guys. Because, like, everyone's, you know, super pumped to go. And it's like this big arena. It's like a melee. Yeah, because you're, like, talking to everybody beforehand. Like, there's the there's Alexander the Jar guy. And then there's uh, Blythe, the, the the wolf dude. Yeah. Um, um, like, all these other NPCs you've met so far. His armor is sweet, too, by the way. What, uh, the Blythe wolf, or? The wolf guy. Not the pot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, and it's, it's a big event. It's really fucking cool. It kind of reminded me a little bit of, like, what I thought the thing in FF9 was going to be, like the hunt thing in FF9. I thought it was going to be like... A yeah. Thing. It was kind of a similar scale to that, though, like a, a big event that's going on in the world. Yeah. Uh, so that was really cool. Uh, but he's just one of many demigods. I mean, these guys are nothing. 
compared to God God. I mean, the one is a fucking, the one's like a dude who's been like corrupted to the point where like he's, he's like a giant serpent basically in the volcano manner. And they literally give you like this spear that like shoots a giant fucking air blast all the way across the room when you fight him just because he's so big and like surrounded by lava that it would be really hard to hit him otherwise. Yeah. That and fight was cool too. Um, this is something they do in the Souls games. Like I think three, three had one like that. Demon Souls had one like that. And I think oh, where they just give you the fucking weapon. Yeah. There's like, and in, in, in Demon Souls, it's like a big manta ray and it gives you like a fucking manta ray killing like spear. <laughs> and it's awesome because you can kind of use it in that area and so, like, shit will be coming at you, and, like, these other mini-sized mantas will be coming for you, and you just fucking zap their ass out of the air. It's, it's pretty sick. Yeah. Uh, so they do this in, the, in these games a lot, where they give you this, like, larger-than-life, just spectacle fight. Uh, but the second half of that fight is fucking brutal. Like, either way, it's like, there's a lot it, of shit coming at you. I mean, yeah, I beat it. I, I didn't really I beat have it. too much trouble with it. I, I was, didn't really beat it on my second try. Dude, everyone told me I was always perpetually underleveled, so maybe that's a big part of it. Like, cause I Could wouldn't be. go I grind. Know. I, I don't, don't even remember what level I was when I beat it. I want to say like a plus, uh, like at least one fifty. But I think I was a hundred. I was like just over a hundred. Oh, dude, yeah, I hit level hundred like way I, before I, I finished think, the game. I think I don't know for sure, but I was. Everyone told me to go grind, and I'm like, I hate grinding in this. Like, it's it takes so fucking long, dude. Like, it's you sick. don't enjoy the grind. Not for that. There is one grind Fuck. spot that's incredible, by the way, where it's like it's in that underground area, and there's like a lava waterfall that you're like overlooking. And there's like a bunch of those giant crow things. And if you shoot an arrow at one in just the right way, it'll like come to try and like attack you and just fall into the void and die. And that's like 11k runes right there. And then like the whole hill down to that area is a bunch of those weird like blowfish, like frog dudes. Oh, like... I hate those things. Yeah, but if you kill them, but they're like they're all sitting around and like not attacking you. So you can just kill them super fucking easy, especially if you have like a good AoE attack. Uh, that's a, that's a good way to grind out a lot of runes super fucking fast. Yeah, I did the uh, my final grinding thing was um, those weird little guys that look kind of like the near robots with the robes on, the near automata robots. Uh, near. That's what I'm talking about though. Those little those little frog guys. Those little like uh, not the not the nematodes, not the ones that sh that shoot death at you. I mean like the the weird little like. They look like those blobfish. Oh yeah, yeah, those, those yeah, those eyes. are the ones. Yep, in the in yeah, the underground yeah. area. Yeah, yeah, that was a good leveling area. Yeah, um, there's like a, there's like a crow that you can shoot an arrow at, like to your left, near like a blood waterfall. And if you shoot the arrow at him, it'll try to chase, like off the off the blood waterfall to come get you, and it'll just fall into the void and die. And you get a hundred, you get you get eleven k runes right there, no problem. Yeah, um, I. Yeah. Uh, I never did that. Roxo, I think it was Roxo. He told me that it was there. Yeah, he's saying he's saying blood wall is awesome in the chat, which is exactly what that is. And it's right next to a grace. So you can just rest of the grace and then reload. It's it's super cheap. I think yeah, I think I know where it is. I just never did it. Um, yeah, but it, yeah, it's like it's like the first area you go to on the way to like fight Moog, the blood guy, way up at the top of the yep. thing. Yep. Yeah, that is that. Yeah, that's where I ground a bunch of levels out. Yeah, and then of course, like right near the end, there was a. I think there was another oh. area. There's like all those dudes that are like watching one guy like preach right near the elevator to get up to the boss fight, and you can just like kill a lot of them super easy with an AOE attack if you have like, Core Frost Stomp or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but yeah, what, what, what would you give the story in this game? Because again, it is very fragmented. It is told, kind of, like it's it's obfuscated very much, like most of the games in this series. But like, do you think that like them teaming up with George R. R. Martin helped at all, or could you even like feel his influence in this story? Yeah, I could feel his influence a little bit. Um, never end. Cause you're a bigger Game of Thrones fan than me, so like you would know. There was a little bit of politics going on with the. Uh... Like the warring families and the yeah. fact that like one of the demigods, like one of the like like the wife of the final boss just like goes off and fucks some other guy, which creates a couple of the other like demigods or yeah. something, right? There was some of that. Um and then the language, I think the old style English, but that's something they kinda did anyway. So yeah, it's uh -oh. it's a light it's a light touch. I think all he did was helped with the setting. 
He helped make the setting. Uh, Joe had a pretty good joke, though. It was like, are you sure the game even ends? Because like, he, he never finishes anything. <laughs> no, um, I, know where, I know where George R. R. Martin's true uh, touch was in this game. It was the Dung Eater. Yeah. <laughs> it was the, only person, the Dung Eater was the only one I didn't really fight because I, you get like the bad ending if you do that, I think. I didn't fight it either. I just fought everything I found, unless I forgot. Yeah. Like, I, I found the area where the Dung Eater was, but I didn't fight him. I think it was like a it was like a sewer, like a bunch of those giant lobsters. I don't think like, I fought him. I don't know what ending did you get. I got Ronnie's ending because it was like a super straightforward quest line. I just became Elden Lord. That's all that happened. Okay, to me. is that what you got? No, you like you basically like put a ring on Ronnie's finger, and then she becomes like, like you become the Elden Lord, and she helps you like rule the stars. Basically, I don't think I got that one. I think it was no. just me. I killed everybody. Well, you, you, to get Ronnie's ending, you have to do a bunch of, like, it's a pretty straightforward quest line, but then, like, the last part of it is a little obfuscated. I found it naturally, just kind of by accident. But there's, like, a there's, like there's a big plateau area on, like, the western side of the map near, like, the swamp, near the near the lakes of Lyrnia. And, like, to get, I forget what you have to do to get up there, but when you do get up there, there's, like, a, uh, there's, like, a cathedral with a big hole in the middle. And if you go down there, you find, like, Ronnie's, like, lifeless body. And if you have the, uh, if you have like the ring item that you need, you put it on her, and then she gives you the uh, the moonlight sword. Oh, okay. Yeah, I never did that. Yeah, the side quests in this game are very bizarre. Um, a little you bit. Have to I like, feel kind of unfinished. You have to kind of like write down everything they say to you if it seems mm -hmm. important. Like it's weird. There's no quest log or anything like that because it's just a Souls game. Yep. They did make I mean, it they a did, little. They did patch in a thing where you can keep track of some of the NPCs. And like where they are. Yeah, it'll show you on the map where the NPCs are, and that's pretty yeah. mainstream of them to do. Mm -hmm. Honestly, that's like the that's about the only mainstream thing they did in this game. I mean, it helps because it's such a big open world game. Like, I can see them bending the knee and being like, "Yeah, we need you to we need to be able to show players where some of these NPCs are," because it's just it's such a big scale that exploring it to find where these characters are would just be a pain in the ass otherwise. Yeah. And honestly, I know we're probably slaughtering this, and I know people are probably going to be like, oh, you guys didn't get it. But yeah, you know what? You're kind of right. I didn't get it. The only <laughs> thing I got was everything I always get from these games, which is, okay, I understand what's going on. And then I get to the ending, and I'm like, nah, yeah, no idea what's going on. <laughs> Not sure. I mean, I became the Elden Lord, I guess, but like, I don't know what happened. Like, I don't know. There's a lot that I don't know yeah. about this game. And I do fault it in this category above all others, the story. I am going to give a six. I'm going to give it a seven. Uh, I think it's good. I think it's got a nice epic feel to it. Again, you really have to dive into lore videos or like read shit on wikis in order to figure out what the hell's going on. Um, but like, there, there's definitely a lot of there's definitely a lot of world building and like storytelling in just the environments themselves. That's really well done, and. Uh, Honestly, like, I, I think, like, just as a fantasy setting, it's super, like, it feels generic at first, but it actually is, like, super cool and unique for a fantasy setting. Um, yeah. It, it definitely feels like a different beast than Demon Souls and Dark Souls, even though, like, they are very similar. I don't know. It, this one kind of has, like, a more regal feel to it, if that's weird, because there's so much, like, use of, like, the color gold and everything. Yeah. Um, it's it's hard to describe, but it's just like th this one does feel different. It does feel different, but they commit the same sins. Which the only one yes. that hasn't done this in the entire series is Sekiro, because Sekiro actually has a story. Mm -hmm. It's a very yeah. simple story, and then there's a bunch of lore on the side if you want it. That's how yeah. you make a game. That's how you make a game story. You give us a base story. It doesn't have to be super complex. It doesn't have to be super crazy. And then if you want to get nerd out on the lore, you put the lore on the side. You don't make the lore the thing. And then this, again, they made the lore the thing. It's like, stop doing that. This yeah. is... I, I might feel a little more like generous towards it because I did Ronnie's Quest, which is very straightforward and like has a pretty good resolution, despite the fact that, like... Well, I was going to say, like it's, it's like, it's got resolution unlike most of the quests in this game, it feels like. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like... I don't know. It's hard because there's a lot of cool stuff here and there's a lot of cool lore if you want to dig into it. But yeah, it is mostly an incomplete story um, unless you're willing to dive into the wikis and the lore videos. I think I think a seven is justified just because 
the the world they built is so cool, but to actually like sort of get all the aha moments that make you realize what's going on, you really have to just dig deep into the supplementary material, which is what happens with all these games, really. Yeah, the only one that doesn't do it is Sekiro, and that's why Sekiro is mm-hmm. the only one with a good story. I'm sorry, yeah. it's just not good. If I have to, if I have to play it five times just to kind of understand what's going on, it's not good. The base of it like, is did fine. You, did you even know that Margit was like an omen, which is like a like a weird half human demon thing? Nope. When you met them, even though they're called Margit, the fell omen. Did you even know what the omens were? And that there's more than just Margit. Nope. Yeah. Well, it's it's too go. it's too much lore, not enough story. And Roxo said it in the chat. The story is almost non-existent. I agree. There's a lot of lore, and that's lore is good for nerding out. Okay, look, FF12. Okay, this is a perfect example. Not the best story ever, but there's a story there. You know what happens. Yeah, there's a core one. There's a fight against the Empire. There's the Empire is going against the gods or, you know, following them, and then he says, fuck off. And it's kind of the <laughs> plight between destiny and you charting your own course. You know, that's there. But there's a lot of lore in FF12 as well. There's a ton of lore in FF12, if you're really nerding out on it, which I do sometimes. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that I know about FF12 that Joe probably doesn't remember. Because it's in like text things in the hunts, you know. It's like sure. There's like a, the mission like where scary uh, fucking descriptions. And yeah, shit. it's there if you want it. If I, you want it, yeah. yeah. But that's... this is all you can want because that's all there is in this game, mm-hmm. and it's too much. It's like a game made solely of sneaking missions. <laughs> it's like the gameplay equivalent of that. Yeah, it's just miserable. <laughs> like <laughs> you're just not having a I good mean, time. I mean, they have Thief, and people like Thief, but you know, those people, those people are psychos. <laughs> Uh, but uh, it's not that it's bad. It just doesn't exist to me, you know. And and maybe I could get into it enough to like it. But as of right now, I think it gets a six. And yeah, Dead Islander. That is that's just Souls games. You're right, but except for Sekiro, that actually has a story, and it's a good story. Like, I'm, a, not gonna, a, I'm not trying to fault Souls games for having that unique. Uh approach to how they do storytelling but at the same time it is frustrating when it's like even though i've watched lore videos and like looked at stuff on the wiki i still can't really piece this shit together super well so it doesn't make sense yeah it's 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 too fragmented and i think it's also injured by the fact that the game is so hard that you spend so much time doing all these other things. Plus, you've got guys like Horalu who just come out of nowhere and they change their name, and it's like, what? I don't even know who you are yeah. to begin with, basically, and now you're someone else? Like, what the fuck? Like, it's it's, just, yeah. it's all too much. It's like Russian literature mixed in with Bloodborne storytelling. <laughs> like, it, it's just a mess. Like, it's too much. I, I, don't, I don't like it. Well, the um, reason for story, I think, in just story in general, is to give the audience an experience or a feeling did you get a feeling out of the story so like what's the fucking point i mean there were there were parts of the game where like a cool boss fight was happening but i i just got the feeling of whoa cool boss fight i didn't go oh it's that guy so yeah there was nothing in the actual story that made you feel anything it was yeah. more like the the spectacle of it, maybe. Like there yeah. were a few dots I was able to connect just by like playing the game and like reading shit. But you know, again, like it, it's it's a very cool world. It's a very cool lore, but that is not everything that makes up a story. And as far as the general plot goes, even though I only beat it a few months ago, I'm having a lot of trouble remembering the like the details that kind of make things important. Yeah, I'll, I'll give a parallel. It's kind of like that kid. And I'm not, you know, back when I was a kid, I wanted to write uh, to be a writer, and uh, briefly, and uh, I would always make my like fantasy world maps. Mm-hmm. It's like there's a kid out there who wants to create like the great next great fantasy novel, and all they're doing is fucking spending time on the maps. <laughs> And like yeah. what the people look like, but never actually make a story, like a core story. I feel yeah. like, yeah, like there's it's no... a well realized world. It's yeah. just that like the actual plot of it isn't super amazing. And do you think? Like, and, kinda... and on top of that, guys, do you think? And I'll say this for A4 because I think I know Twice's answer. Do you think this game would be better served with a story that pulled you in, in addition to the other things, which I know are going to be positively reviewed here in a second? 
I think so yeah. because again, like Ronnie's quest line is very kind of standard. Like it's obfuscated a lot, but it's kind of just like, hey, you gotta you gotta serve this lady. You gotta like go and like save her essentially and put a ring on her finger and then she becomes like your wife. Yeah. yeah um... So if there was something like stronger like that for all the possible endings, I think it would be a hell of a lot better. But yeah. I mean, it's twice as saying that Sekiro is a much better from soft game just by virtue of having an actual plot. Yeah. And I'm sure it has a lot of the same details that the souls in the, and like bloodborne games do. So yeah, I think there's something to be said there about that. Dead Islanders. I, again, it's oh. a really cool way. Like, so the, the, way they, the way these games tell their stories is very unique and it's very interesting. But the, we've also been doing this for like 15 fucking years now. So it's like, yeah. it's, I don't know. It's like you can, and you, they made a story with the last one. You know, I probably yeah. don't understand. There's lore in there that I don't get, sure, with Sekiro. But I understand the base plot. It makes mm-hmm. sense to me. Um, but uh, Dead Islander brings up a good point. He says it's more like a history slash nonfiction where there isn't a story. You're just thrown in the middle of it. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, those fantasy stories where they, it's like it's like the world building one. So like the the history of or the world of ice and fire. It's not even fire and blood, which is good and history. It's boring ass fake history. That's kind of what this feels like. It's like it's like the it's like I'm reading the Cimmerillion but I'm playing it. It's like, it's not yeah. Lord of the Rings. It's not a story. It's just kind of like, here's the backlog. Here's all the stuff. Here's the world. Here's the so edit. it's not... Playing uh, fucking glossary. Because like he's saying history, but like I've read history books. I've read, read really good history books. I've, I've, I've watched history documentaries and they usually are weaving a story. So I kind of... I think on a fundamental level, I think I disagree with that. Now you could say it's a textbook. <laughs> like a... Like a just a textbook okay, where it just like, okay, gives you like the like, basics and that's it. Is, it's not, this is, this it's not like any emotional anything. This is just like playing a game that takes place during the Black Plague and you're just seeing how people lived in the Black Plague the versus Wikipedia a story article on the Black Plague. Like a plot that actually happens with, re- with like ascending action resolution in the Black Plague. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's the problem. There's no, there's no story structure and that's why I can't in good conscience give the story a good score. I just can't because it doesn't exist as far as I'm concerned. It's just a bunch of lore, which is fucking annoying. If it doesn't pull you in, it doesn't pull you in. I think a different reviewer would be interested in all that shit. What pulled me in was the gameplay, not the story so much. Yeah. And sort of like the challenge. So speaking of gameplay, um, this is an open world game. There's crafting. There's item gathering. There are massive areas to explore. Um there are side quests, there are side areas, massive areas that are completely optional. Mm-hmm. There are a bunch of different weapon types, there are a bunch of different build types, there's a bunch of different ways to level up your character, a bunch there's of different, a bunch different types of magic too. Yeah, there's a ton of magic. So if you want to be a mage, you can do that. There's a lot of customization <clears throat> when it comes to the gameplay. They um, really did kind of throw everything in. Yeah, this is with the kitchen sink with this one. It the, really does feel like sort of like a best of from soft like Souls games type of scenario. Yeah, giant mech robots. Yeah, the, well, I was gonna say it's, it include de- excluding everything futuristic, but like you've got like it, a ton of different magic systems. You've got like katanas, the huge swords. You've got like the fucking. Uh, you got like clubs and 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 blunt objects. You've got. Bows and arrows, you've got claws. Um, and that, that isn't even including a bunch of shit like the summons and a bunch of other optional shit. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> there's a which lot. Which is like a system in and of itself. And there's multiplayer in here. You can summon mm-hmm. someone to help you fight the bosses, just like in Bloodborne. Um, so Joe could beat it, theoretically. <laughs> no, I mean, in terms of gameplay, too, I will say, and maybe this will prick Joe's ears up, I don't know if it will, but like this honestly might be one of the most accessible Souls games ever, just by virtue of it being open world. Because there is such a wide range of options in front of you as to where to go and what to do. If you run into a wall and you find a boss that's too hard for you, you could just go do something else elsewhere on the map. Because like... Yeah. As opposed to like Dark Souls or whatever or Bloodborne where it's kind of just like a linear hallway essentially where you basically just 
you keep going down this hallway and beating your head against the wall until you break it. Here, it's just like, all right, well, I can't break down this wall, but I'm going to walk around it and go do some other shit. Yeah. Um, and I actually have proof of that, too, because my, my one buddy, he, he's like a big artist, and he does not really play video games a lot, and he doesn't really play hard video games a lot, because uh, like sometime earlier this year, he got a new PC, and I bought him Bayonetta, and he was complaining about how hard it was. But then we would all be streaming Elden Ring, and he like seemed interested, and I'm like, well, if you think Bayonetta is hard, there's no fucking way you're going to like Elden Ring. But he bought it anyway, and he's on his second playthrough now, I think, like probably 200 plus hours. Yeah. And this guy normally does not, he's like very casual when it comes to gaming. He does not play this type of shit. So I think that's proof positive right there that like, yeah, this game definitely like reaches a wider audience than your normal Souls game. Yeah. Um, there's a lot more customization with the weapons. You can put what's called uh, Ash Fragments. Is that what they are? Uh, if you're, ashes of war ashes, ashes of, of war. war they're like little spells that you can attach to your weapons um, they're basically special skills that yeah. you can like yeah and there's uh there you can cast spells on your weapon itself to do like certain types of damage um you can be a spellcaster entirely uh there's a lot of different ways to play and certain weapons have like innate ashes of war essentially where it's like a special move yeah. so like the one i used in the end was the bloodhound fang to fight the last boss um, because it was more of a mono e mono like actual old school sword fight where he would attack and I would parry and then I'd do a critical hit on him and shit like that, whereas the other one was just me spamming the fucking attack, like, like some psycho ninja or a psycho samurai. Um, there's a lot of different ways to play the game. You can use pole arms, you can use the bow, you can use magic. There's a bunch of different customization. Um, you can customize the fuck out of your character. Uh, the fighting is fucking smooth as fuck in this game. It's extremely smooth. It is buttery. It's so perfect. weird seeing older FromSoft games, like even Demon Souls, like the original Demon Souls, or like if you want to go way older, like Kingsfield on the PS1, and just seeing how far they've come in terms of like combat design. Like, is it better than it, Armored Core Four? Answer. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yes, yeah, it they've, is. They've come a long way. Yeah, <laughs> from shit really to good. Smooth. They they have like a really good um new move in this game called a guard counter, where if you get attacked by an enemy while you're guarding, you can immediately hit R two to like immediately counter attack. Yeah, and they kind of have it's a useful against almost everything. They have the Sekiro system, and this might have been in the older games. And I just didn't notice of staggering. So like, if you do enough guard counters, you'll like knock your opponent kind of off balance, and it's hidden. Whereas in Sekiro, you could actually see it. How close you were to actually stunning them and like fucking them up, getting a special critical hit in. But in this one, you don't see it, but it's still there. And so guard you can counters... also just do like a bunch of normal attacks. And if you do it long enough, like their poise will go down so that they stagger. But yeah, yeah, that's what the stats called the poise. Um, so you got that in there, and that's kind of like a. I feel like that's something more from Sekiro. Um, I don't think the combat is as good as Sekiro's. I really don't. Point being, though, when you stagger them, you can go up and basically do the visceral attack from Bloodborne. Yeah, like a nice critical in. Yeah, big heavy crit. Um, one of my ways I that I, that I built, I actually had a uh, a rune on that would give me. It was like the bramble, bloody bramble looking one, mm -hmm. and it would give me health back when I would pull off a crit. And so me yep. getting my parries down was like a big reward. I'd get like a good third of my health back every time I landed a parry. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to build your character. A lot of different talismans which you can equip that give you certain inherent uh, skills. Um, even even with the um, you can even customize like your your flasks because you have a flask for health like your Estus flask, but you also have magic, and you can sort of like allocate how many charges you want between those two. Right. Yeah. So there's like a lot of ways to customize how you play this. Yeah, there's a lot, um, tons of different ways to play, and there's a the map is fucking huge. Like we said earlier, there's so much to do. There's so much to do in this game. I yeah, haven't even. Like, I, there's still like six bosses I haven't even killed, like major dude, bosses. I, I put 110 hours into this game and not a lot of that was like re trying bosses because I was using, you know, the mimic tier and just rivers of blood on a lot of the final bosses. So I was like not having a lot of trouble. So most of that was just exploring the map yeah, and just sort of like filling it out and seeing where all the cool landmarks went and whatnot. Yeah. And then going into each of the little dungeons and doing the little puzzle, like finding the, uh, the lever that allowed you to unlock where the final boss is located. Um, and yeah. there's like a bunch of different contraptions. And, and those different... felt, those felt kind of copy and paste like the, um, 
uh, the Chalice Dungeons from Bloodborne, but like they still help flesh out like the open world experience and give you a little something to do in basically every area. Yeah. Even if they do look and feel kind of samey after a while. One of the super cool ones was the one right outside of uh, Radon's area where you had like these, it was like the ghosts, there was like these ghost guys and they were fighting each other kind of. And you can yeah. go in there and you can start like wrecking them both up and then they'd all turn on you, of course. But Yeah, but then you can just walk through and just like get runes just because they're killing each other. Yeah. So there's a lot of really cool things. There's a bunch of copy and paste bosses um, in those. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many ulcerated tree spirits did you fight? Dude, a lot. I fought like seven of them, I swear to God. Uh, yeah. I got them down, though. Like they, they, I think the last one barely even touched me. Um, yeah. The thing that fucked me with the last one were those stupid fuckbag centipede guys. Uh, oh, the fucking, the, the ones that shoot like the things yeah. at you? And they yeah, got, fuck like, them. They're, they're like that. 900 feet long, and they have like fucking the reach of of like five me's combined. And Dude, the when I first saw those things, it was because I opened a treasure chest. I think it's like in that lake area where you fight the white like dragon near the start of the game. And there's like a there's like a development of like houses in that lake area, and one of the one of the chests is booby trapped, and it teleports you to like a mine in the middle of Kalid. So I'm like, where am I? I can't teleport out of here. And there's these like silver fish dudes that are shooting all these fucking uh, projectiles at me. Fuck this. Yeah, the mine. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, that's where I first found him too. Um, yeah. You, you also got trapped by that fucking uh, that chest. Yeah, and then I stayed there until I completed it. But yeah. uh, it was <laughs> Jesus. rough. It was rough. Yeah. Um, somebody had to tell me to use a blunt weapon, and then it made it a lot easier. But uh, yeah. Yeah, there's ton there's stuff everywhere. Like there's it's just a, it's, there's so much content. They'll even they'll even fake um online like they'll they'll fake enemy um invasions when you get to certain parts just so they can like show you specific aspects of the game. Like I know there's like a river near that one lake where you walk through and as you go through there, right before you get to this one cave uh, it like triggers a fight against like an invading spirit, and I think like another guy, like another like a friendly one, comes and helps you along with that. Yes, like without yeah. you having to summon him. Yep, there's a bunch of that, um, and some of yeah. those guys they'll give you like a super weapon, like a, a specific weapon or like a, a talisman or something, and so they're worth yeah. grinding out. Did you did you fight the three of those like summon spirits from that giant jar guy in Caleb, and he's like standing near the Coliseum at the bottom? Um. I don't remember. Did you do any of the uh, the blood or the the manor, the volcano manor stuff? Yeah, yeah. So like, I beat the, like I beat the boss. I uh, I don't think I completed their quest line at all, but I, I definitely went through and beat Reichard and kind of cleared as much of that dungeon as I could. Oh no, there's like a quest line in the in that area where you. It's basically like the Dark Brotherhood. You're sent out to go assassinate um, other members. Yeah, I I didn't touch that. I didn't touch that quest line, but oh, I, I know of it. It was fucking sweet. Like they they would put out a mark, and I'd basically go invade another NPC, like another player that's not a person. Yeah. Uh, I would kind of go into their world, and I'd fight them, and I'd kill them, and I, it would be like a contract. Um, you know, it was like killing is my business, my mega death. It was sick. <laughs> and then <laughs> I'd business come. Business is good. Yeah, business was pretty good until the it dried up. The track or the album. The track. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I, I, there was like four or five marks that I took out, and I would get their equipment, and it was pretty sweet. Um, one of them, I can't remember what the guy, who the guy was, but I wore his armor for a long time. Um, it was pretty good. Uh, but yeah, I think the gameplay is pretty fucking good in this game, um, if I'm going to be honest. I don't think the combat is as good as it is in Sekiro, though. I don't think it's as impressive. I think Sekiro is extremely unique among video games where it's like a weird rhythm thing when you're actually yeah, in the that, fight. Yeah, that's what I've heard. I've not played Sekiro, but I've heard nothing but praise for its combat system and that it's kind of like a it's kind of like a rhythmic dance between you and the opponent. Which to me is kind of what a sword fight seems like. You know what I mean? Like there's right. a lot of back and forth and there's a lot of, you know, you're fighting and just waiting for an opening and you have to like force that opening a little, but if you force too hard, then they'll get the opening. That's what it sounds like. It's a, it sound that's what a sword fight to me looks like. Is you're just yeah. Although you know, Dead Islander brings up a good point that I guess Sekiro only has one weapon versus like a hundred of them. Yeah, that's game. true. That's true. Um, so they can kind of refine the combat a little better. But I mean, 
a lot of the combat styles in this game don't feel unviable. Like, it feels like you could beat the game with virtually any of these weapons if you really wanted to. Yeah, I mean, shit. Uh, like, magic were... is super busted, but, like, it's not like... You could probably beat this game as an archer if you have the right skills. Yeah. And there's the guy uh, um, that beat it with two shields. I mean, one well, was like a poison shield, and the other one was something. Yeah, who did you say did that from our, from our Discord again? I think it was... Uh, I think it was that Death Sword. I know he goes by something else now, but whatever yeah. that is. That's still insane. Yeah. Um, that, 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 that's even an option that you can just beat the game with two shields. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, that's pretty crazy. But mm -hmm. it, it, there's a lot of versatility in this game. And like I said, I don't think the combat's quite as good. You're right. They focus on one weapon instead of 100, but it's just not as good. It's, quali it's quantity over quality, but the quality's still really good. So it's like... I mean, is, for me yeah. personally, this is an easy ten. Like this is my game of the year so far. Um, yeah, I think it's a ten too. Um, I don't have to like it as much as Sekiro for it to be the perfect iteration of what it is. Right. Uh, it is the best Souls combat that there is. Um, not Elden Seki Soulsborne, but best Souls. <laughs> it's better than all the other ones uh, that I have played, which is all of them now. I've beaten every one of these games, so um, this one has the best non Sekiro non Bloodborne combat, I would say. Right. I do think those two are both better combat wise. Yeah. But But they're all tens? They're all well I don't know if they're all tens. Two and one. I don't know if those are tens, but they're pretty good. <laughs> they make they make games like Skyrim extremely boring to play. Let's say that. There's right. there's there's way, you know, the, the games where you're just basically hacking. It's like God of War versus... Even though that game we haven't reviewed, <laughs> Skyrim. Yeah, we have. We reviewed it. We did? Yeah, it was a long time ago. We had Chase versus Game on for that. Oh, review. fuck. I was like... Was I gone during that one? Three years ago, maybe. I don't know if you were. I, I can't know. remember. Uh, but it makes games with not really good combat not very fun. Like, God of War has kind of similar combat, I would say, than one like something like this. Um... You mean the new one or the new one? Yeah, the new one, not the old ones. Uh, but it it stands out for sure, and I do think this is the best iteration within the Souls realm. I think this is yeah. primo uh, combat. The, the, I like the counters a lot. The uh, guard guard counters; those are really really fun, and they add like yeah. a new element of actually blocking, which is something I almost never do in these games. I never really block. And this one, though, you kind of have to sometimes. There's attacks that you cannot parry, and so you need either, either need to dodge roll or block that shit. Um, yeah. And this game finally had me actually using my shield for something other than parrying. So it's it's really good um, gameplay wise. Uh, graphics and design. What do you think of the way the game looks? So I think this game is beautiful, um, despite the very kind of generic fantasy setting. And it's kind of got that, like, I assumed anyway, upon looking at it, that it would kind of have the generic, like, brown syndrome that a lot of modern games have, where it's just, like, various shades of brown. But, like, this game has a lot of very distinct, beautiful, colorful areas. Like, that underground area, you look up at the sky, and you're seeing, like, stars or whatever the fuck, because you're so far underground. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. It's probably like reflections just, of the gems, but yeah. It's like, it's yeah, amazing. And then like you walk in a Kaelid and everything turns fucking red. And you're in like the snow area and you have like these beautiful fucking vistas with like the sun beaming over them with all the snow and everything. Um, like some of the areas do feel kind of samey in terms of their color palette and their design. But like generally, I think this game looks pretty fucking gorgeous. Yeah, um, there's definitely a lot of distinct, uh, you know, as much as we have talked about repeat bosses, there are still kind of a lot of boss models. There's a lot of different character models in the game. Um, there's a lot yeah. of very distinct looking dudes, very distinct looking enemies. But yeah, they'll rinse to repeat, sure. But there's still a lot going on in this game. Um, I love I love the way it looks. So there were a lot of people that were saying it didn't look that good. And it's like, yeah, maybe it's not. it's not as... I don't know. I think it looks amazing. I don't know what the fuck people are talking about. And I played it I in it performance. Really I don't know what it. I don't know what it runs like or looks like on the PS5. But like on my PC, I was basically running it at max settings and like buttery smooth 60, and just like yeah, it looked gorgeous. 
Yeah, I chose the uh, frame rate setting because there's like two mm. different settings you can go into. There's like uh, make it the game look better graphically, and then there's make the refresh rate higher. So yeah. like when the combat, when you get people fucking swinging at you, the refresh rate is a little more important. So that's what I chose. Um, but even then, I was like, the game still looks amazing. So I don't know what the fuck they're talking about with the. I'm wondering if they can just program a variable. I don't thing. know. I don't know how they did what they say they did um, when you you choose that setting. But that's what I ended up doing, and it still looks amazing. Like it's it's an incredibly polished game as far as like the yeah the which, areas. Like, which is weird too because I wouldn't have thought of FromSoft being like a company worthy of like a polished game. Even even back in like the Dark Souls one days, yeah, Dark they, Souls one to me always kind of felt like a cult classic that was like a double A game, where it's like people really like this, but it doesn't feel like a super polished triple A game. Whereas like this feels like a super polished triple A game. Yeah, it's almost kind of like Grand Theft Auto was back in the day. Like, yeah, they're yeah, a big deal, yeah, yeah. but they kind of look like shit. Mm -hmm. And this one, it does not look like shit at all. Like it looks, it looks amazing. Yeah, but again, just the, the sheer variety of, like, environments and, 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 like, color palettes and all these other things in this game is really something to be commended. Because, um, again, it's, like, it's kind of just, like, they took, ev like, the best of, like, all the FromSoft games and threw it into one thing. So you kind of have, like, areas that are sort of reminiscent of all of their big hits. And because of that, you just get a huge fucking variety of environments, enemy types, and just sort of, like, moods. Yeah, um, which I think I, I think is really impressive for a big open game, a big open world game like this. Like, not that other open world games don't do this. Like Zelda also has, like Breath of the Wild also has a lot of vari variance in its areas, but it's a lot more simple. Like, oh, this is the lava area, this is the snow area, this is the forest area. But here, it's just like I don't know. It, it's higher fidelity. It, it's it's got a lot more going on in terms of sort of like how each area feels and the different like uh responses that it evokes from the player. Yeah, and I, I think it it works really well. It's one of those games that like the graphics and, I don't know, and the design of it it kind of works within gameplay as well. It's kind of like with Bloodborne where there's all the shortcuts and stuff like that and so like the actual mm -hmm. design of the world kind of lends itself to the gameplay in kind of a weird way. And there's a lot of like hidden nooks and crannies and I know design is mostly about like the actual visuals. Mm -hmm. Um but I think the visuals kind of play a part in this game in kind of a weird way. Yeah, when you're like when, when you're in like Stormvale and then you come out from like this one secret door you found and it's like, oh, I'm back here now. And that's always been that's always been these games as bread and butter is like the secret shortcuts leading back to an earlier area. But like the, the just the way the interconnected feeling of the world is definitely part of like the visual design. Like, okay, we have to like design a castle and like how it all interconnects. And it's not even just the castles, too. Like, there'll be tunnels or secret, like, areas in the map that will take you to, like, a place you've never been before, a place that you've been before, but now it's like, no, I'm way up here. Uh, and yeah, it's just really smartly done in that sense. Yeah, uh, I think the dragons are pretty sweet looking. Um, the dragons are pretty cool. Like, you fight them four, four, five, six fucking times over the course of the game, but, like, every time you fight them, they're fucking huge. It's a cool, spectacular uh, boss fight. Every time, especially if you hop on Torrent, there's your little like steed that you ride around on. Yeah, I forgot um, to mention that guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I think it looks. I think it looks phenomenal. I'm definitely giving it a ten as far as the gonna, graphics and design. I'm gonna give it a nine. It's 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 easily one of the best looking like newer games. I don't know if it's like a good PS5 showcase or anything, but. Again, just it, it it feels similar to their other games while also sort of invoking this new feeling that I'm kind of having trouble describing. But yeah, you you just get like a huge variety of areas in this game, which is something like, and it's all an interconnected world. Whereas like I, I know that Dark Souls games are like interconnected and they kind of have a wide variety too. But here it's like you can kind of see the scope of everything just by virtue of it being a massive open world, as opposed to like. You know, something a little more closed in, like a Dark Souls. Yeah, this is more like Red Dead Redemption versus like Red Dead Revolver, which is kind of yes, how, uh, yes. which is kind of how the Dark Souls games feel. Like, yeah, you can teleport all over the place, but in this one, you can go almost everywhere. 
Yeah. You know, there's certain little houses and shit you can't get into, but if there's a castle, you can get in there and you can explore the castle. Whereas like, Mm -hmm. you know, Red Dead Revolver is kind of an old PS2 game where it's open world, it's faux open world. You get, you load into like an area and then you can explore that area and then you leave. This one, it's like the whole world is open to you. Um, so it's yeah, kind of it, a different feel. Like Dark Souls, in comparison, feels more like a level-based thing, even though it's not. It's, you know what I mean? It's a bunch of like essentially closed-off areas that are connected yeah. together, like yeah. tunnels, whereas this is just like, you're just in the open world. Dark Souls feels more like the optional dungeon than this game, honestly. Yes, yes. Where it's like a Which I mean, why they call them legacy dungeons in this game. Yeah, but, um, yeah pretty much, yeah. It's just got such a bigger scale to it, and you can really feel it in the graphics. You can feel it in the design of the world. Yeah, um, for sure. Uh, sound and music. What do you think of the soundtrack? Uh, voice acting. All that's all that good shit. So the voice acting is really good. As for like the soundtrack, it, it's not super memorable, isn't it? Like super subdued. Yeah, it's kind of uh, more atmospheric. It's kind of yeah. background background music. And there are some songs that stick out, like when you're in the round table, like, you know, obviously, obviously stuff like when you're in the round table holder, when you're fighting certain bosses over and over again. Yeah, the, um, they usually have pretty good hub tracks. Um, I think the one in Dark Souls 2 is probably the best um, when you're in that town, but uh, the round table hold is pretty good. Yeah. Um, I think the voice acting is really good in the game. I it's think stellar. they did a really great job. I like the writing for the voice acting. I think the uh, kind of like old English stuff is really cool. Um, definitely yeah. fits the setting, obviously. Um, I think like the, I, I could talk. I could listen to fucking um, Blythe or fucking uh, Gideon Offner talk for like hours with like their little like I- Irish sort of like lilty voices going on. Yeah, um, I don't know. I, I I think the soundtrack. I think you're kind of right. Um, there's some really good moments, but it doesn't. There's nothing that really comes to mind. I just know there were a few. Yeah, times, nothing jumps out at me. A few times when I was playing, because like uh, the songs that are in there are good. It's just I don't remember them past the moment. Yeah, it's not like Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth Hacker's <laughs> Memory, where like, it's like gonna be with me for the rest of my life, you know. <laughs> Um, but it's pretty good, and it's atmospheric, and it, it, it fits the mood, and it fits the tone, and it fits the areas, um, I think. So if I were to break them into two, I'd probably give voice acting five out of five, and then sound and music probably three out of five. And so I'm going to give it a good solid eight out of ten. Um, I, you just speak in my mind. I'm going to mirror that eight. Um, again, no disrespect to the soundtrack. It's It's good. I just don't remember it. But in the moment, it fits really well. Yeah, when it when it shows up, like the final boss, it's, it's epic. You know, the boss fights and themes are epic, but it's not like it's not like Final Fantasy epic. It's where not I like remember Doom twenty sixteen or no, yeah, or Doom it, Eternal. It's not like the greatest <laughs> soundtrack ever. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just it's it's good. Yeah. Um, I love how much of a meme, by the way, the Doom music has become basically throughout the internet, just like. Yeah, it's used so often as like a punchline and a meme, or yeah. dude, it, it's not short. bad. It's Metal Gear Rising. Metal Gear Rising music got like really popular again this year for some reason as like meme fodder. I wouldn't know. Which is, I wouldn't it, be that able soundtrack to... is fucking incredible, but um, I wouldn't be able to pick that one out to be honest. You should you should play Metal Gear Rising. I it's should really. I, God, you know we got to review Metal Gear Rising because the it's going to be ten years old next year. Is that the one on PS3? Yeah, the ride in one. Yeah, I have that. Wasn't it's that made PC by uh, well. Platinum? Um, Is that the Platinum Games? Yes, yes. Nice. We should keep reviewing the Metal Gear Solid game, starting with number two. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it was made by the guys who made Nier Automata. Interesting. The Metal Gear Rising. Huh. So it's yeah, totally Metal Gear Rising is like, legitimately one of my favorite video games of all time. It is just so fucking stupid and great. Okay. And the soundtrack is a big part of that. But um, Sorry yeah. to derail. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, final category: replayability. Do you want to play the game again? Is there a reason to play the <laughs> game again? Will you play the game again? I will say yes. Although I'm not doing that for a long time because I put 110 hours into this and I want to play something else. Imagine. And I have been playing other things, but um, just due to the sheer amount of content in this game and the sheer amount of like different ways you can play this fucking thing, yeah, this is an easy ten. Um, 
it's just so easily replayable uh, because of those other factors. Schweiss immediately put down a 10 when he asked you the question, by the way. <laughs> yeah. He didn't even yeah, wait for your feeling. response. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's easily a 10 out of, out of 10 for this one. This is an easy win. Um, there's a ton of different ways to play the game. There's a ton of different shit that I didn't do. I didn't even fight Melania all the way. Um, my little Plus tiny... there's like six or seven my, endings. My so. tiny hands couldn't take down Melania. <laughs> Uh, I, I couldn't, I didn't fight her. Uh, I did fight her. I just didn't kill her. Um, and, uh, when I do though, I'm going to bury her on my golf course, by the way, just in case anyone wanted. <laughs> that's, 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 the only, that's the only way to do it. Apparently. Um, you get a tax break. That's what I did with um, the last one. Uh, but, uh, sure. She fell. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect timing. Uh, no. And, and uh, it's just amazing. Like there's there's so much to do in this game. It's really fun. The combat um, is a lot of fun. The the parrying I got down. There's parts where I know like when you fight uh, Godric the Grafted, um, you can't parry him. As far as I know, I I found no parries. That's just one where you have to just jump when he does certain attacks. You have to get in, make your hits, jump back out, dodge roll. It's like a mechanic fight. And I was like, this is pretty cool, because up to this point I was like, okay, I'm going to parry these guys. I'm going to parry these guys. I'm going to parry these guys. I can't fucking parry this bitch. So it was like, okay, and I need even to... before he puts a dragon on his arm. Yeah, exactly. Then it's even... Well, actually, it's kind of easier when he does that. Because you can pull out his uh, his big, like, flamethrower move, and you can just fucking stand next to the prick and just nail him, because he can't reach you, because he's in this fucking big animation, and I'm just down there cutting him as this midget man. Uh, but, uh, like there, it's cool because you can't just stick to one play style in this game. Um, you have to be good at kind of a lot of different ways to play. Um, as far as the combat goes, there's mechanic fights, there's spectacle fights, there's fights where you can parry the shit out of people. And like, there were people watching me that were like, oh, I don't think you can parry the Godskin or Godskin guy that looks like a big fat ball sack. Basically. He it looks like, <laughs> Dude, yeah, the Godskin. what's his name? He's like, yeah, and he rolls around with it, his fats flapping everywhere. Yeah, and then it's funny because he has like a huge belly button, and my little like three year old said it was a booty. <laughs> it was the guy's like booty. <laughs> I can't remember if it was on his backside or his front, but it looks like a big belly button. It's like just we a mound get that belt of flesh. Out a little early twice, so. Yeah, I know. Uh, but like that guy, I parried the fuck out of until he did his roly poly oly shit, his Caleb Craig attack. <laughs> and then I had to hide because it was scary, uh, and it does a lot of damage. But like, it's cool. I mean, that guy was scary too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he looks like foreskin, like a like you collected foreskin from like ten different people, and you like you mush it into. Before? Not for a long time. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you like mush it into some being. Past, you know. Yeah, those that's those are we don't talk about the past. We don't talk about the never, skin never talk about the past. We never talk show. about the past on Nude Clan. Yeah, um, it's just like a mound of it's like Arby's meat, but if it was like human flesh, it's just like pale, pasty, nasty. Um, but yeah, no, like this game is easily worth sixty dollars, and you will get so much content out of those sixty dollars. Just yeah, and even, it's even without replays, but like it, this game was made to be replayed. Yeah, and it's hilarious. Like, play Breath of the Wild all the time with like. Oh, how how fast can I go to the castle and get, beat Ganon? And this is like the same fucking thing, but it's a Souls game with like a ton of different ways to build your character and play. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, it got a lot of people that didn't play Souls games into Souls games. Like Doctor yeah, Roxo had never played one. Like there's this is a game where a lot of people, like Joe said, like people that are into games, they a lot of them played this game, even if they weren't yeah, into the series. Again, my artist yeah. friend who does not play these kinds of hard games. He's yeah. on his like second playthrough, maybe even third by now, with 200 plus hours with this thing. Exactly. So it's very unique in that way, too. Even though it's not the easiest, it is not the easiest by far. Bloodborne and Demon Souls Remake are way fucking easier than this game. This game fucked me up. This game's pretty easy, but then again, I was using summons, so I'm kind of biased. Like, yeah. I didn't want to use it because it seemed cheap. I realize yeah. now You're at, kinda right. <laughs> that I did but, 200 uh, hours that it was probably a stupid choice. Because I still have never even seen what the summons look like, um, the Ash summons. But uh, they just look like white versions of like some of the enemies, and and like, or if you're using the mimic, they're just you. Oh, good. I'll feel safer with them around. 
Yeah, so but you can, like, upgrade birds. them, too. Like, it's a whole fucking system in and of itself. I know. I upgraded one all the way just to see if there's a trophy, and there wasn't. Ah, uh, okay. Um, it's, there's a lot. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, and I've heard that the Melania fight is harder with the Ash summons. I don't know how, but I, other people were saying I mean, that. I wouldn't so know. It, I'd be around my second try. <laughs> it, seems, <laughs> so. it seems like it's another mechanic where it's like, yeah, it works most of the time, but sometimes there's too much going on on the screen. I know it's harder for the Ash fights with her because when she hits you, she oh, gets yeah. health back. That's right. That's what it was. So she would hit your summon and get health back. So your summon yeah. would basically be fucking fodder for her health bar, which is mm -hmm. a nightmare scenario. Unless you both have rivers of blood, and then that's pretty easy, apparently. Well, yeah, if you have your fucking mimic, who's a copy of you with the best weapon in the game, fully upgraded, yeah, it's easy. <laughs> I don't know if I'd call rivers of blood the best weapon in the game, but it's I, definitely like for my build. It was a pretty damn good weapon, that's for damn sure. I would call it the best weapon in the game, um, but I like the bleed effect. That was kind of yeah. my build is like bleed and uh, parry for health. That was kind of what I. That was basically just on. going like dex int. I, I stuck as a samurai the whole time, but I, I dabbled in some magic. I, I dabbled too. I like would put on certain items uh, to up my, um, I can't remember what it was, spirit, I think, or something, uh, to get like the lightning or the holy on my weapon for certain bo uh, certain boss fights. Yeah. But of course, the last guy is made of the holy magic, so I can't mm -hmm. use it on him. So the last fight, mm -hmm. I just had my... Oh, we didn't even talk about the last... Can we, can we? Can I bitch about the Elden Beast, please? Because yeah. that's like the worst fucking boss fight I've ever fought in my life. Sure, go ahead. This giant fucking penis monster that fucking... Every time you get one hit in, he runs away 500 fucking feet in any other direction. And it's in this arena that's like a big fucking lake with like no horizon like it just horizon everywhere so you can't tell how far away anything is i don't even know if there's like an edge to the map uh and then he does some other bullshit like he just fucking sends out a homing uh homing projectile that stays on the screen even after it hits you for like 18 full fucking seconds yeah uh, this it's such a it's such a bad boss fight for like that kind of game yeah i think you're like, it i feels think antithetical to like everything you've been doing up to that point yeah, I think Rivers of Blood is really effective against this fight. Um, just because it's such I a tried. fast attacker. Even with, just, a, even with the fucking Mimic tier, my Mimic tier would probably die like before I got to him while, while I'm fighting the first guy. But like if the Mimic tier even was around, like with Rivers of Blood, I wasn't able to do much damage. I had to switch to a fucking like a hammer that had like a, a, a an Ash of War on it that like summoned a bunch of those rocks from far away so I could hit him. Nah, I, I, I ran up to him every time. Uh, that's was, what Zach was talking about a few weeks ago on when, when like when he was here earlier. Was, I got so fucking frustrated with that final boss fight, like more frustrated than I did for the rest of the entire game, except for like maybe the tree area where Millennia is. I don't know, man. Uh, Horalu fucked me up more than the final boss for sure. Um, it's just his Again, bullshit. I, I, I was using mimics and rivers of blood, so I I, I do not have that experience. Sadly, his, his bullshit. Like I'm gonna get you. Like, uh, like it's, it's fucking like it's his hands in the air and he like fucking comes for you. And I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. it took me so long to figure out the timing on that. And he would hit me to death. It would be one hit and I would be fucking like ragdolled and it's over. Right. And I get so pissed cause he does that little, like I'm coming. It's like a dad chasing his little kid, you know, he's like going to come tickle you, but he just fucking slams you into the ground and you die. <laughs> it's like a murderous father. Yeah, and like it would, it would just randomly happen throughout the fight, and fucking god, it took me forever, dude. I can't wait for, I can't wait for fucking Nicholas to mouth off, and you'll be like, "I'm gonna get you," and then you tackle him, and you're like, "I am horror yeah. new warriors." <laughs> yeah, just rip his limbs off like in that fight when he grabs you. It's so fucking overpowered. It's cheap as fuck. Yeah. Um. But yeah, there's. I I, I think the final boss fight was okay. Uh, it was. The stage was a little bit big, <laughs> like a little too big. A little tired. It's about fourteen football fields too big, I think. Yeah, yeah. One football field is fine. Uh, yeah. The timing, I I had to like jack the camera way up in the air for the timing of that like hop over move. Mm -hmm. Um, that one was rough. The little laser beam that shoots straight at you, I had the timing down the first time I fought him. And then every time after that, I was like, I went full retard and just could not fucking dodge it, like, to save my life. Yeah. Which I really needed to, because it hits, like, a truck. And then the one that uh, he fucking catches you, um, oh, he did the little, like, drop down where it's like the dagger version of that, where they're just flying from the sky. And then I got swiped, and that was vicious. And, dude, before I beat it, the night I beat it, 
one of the fights, like probably an hour and a half before I actually killed him, I got him down to the smallest chunk of health I have ever seen in my life. Like it was well before the guy's name. It was just like I could have probably like punched his ass with no sword. It was in like my a hand pixel on your screen. You yeah, flicked him with your finger. Yeah, and I I got fucking smacked and I died. I was so fucking mad, dude. And it was like mm-hmm. four a.m. and I didn't beat it until like almost six in the morning. And I gotta go to bed. Like the wife gets up at eight. I gotta be up at eight to watch the kids. <laughs> I'm fucking sitting there playing this stupid game. I straight I straight up had less trouble with some of the other huge boss fights like i don't know if you fought placidamax the secret like lightning dragon twin headed boss uh, in the sky area no i don't think so that doesn't sound yeah familiar. i mean he's he's tough but i had less trouble with him than the fucking elden beast the elden beast has a lot of health too like a freakish mm-hmm. amount of health yeah. um i like the fight with the it, guy it, it, it makes it worse because there's a whole boss fight right before that now granted you, you mastered it yeah, I mastered. I didn't, but I mastered it, quote unquote. But that would still fuck up a lot because there's a well, lot of ways yeah. to fuck up. Because he does, do. if he does a stomp move, or if I get greedy and I try to heal, God forbid, I take yeah, a healing item, uh, then he'll just come fuck me up. Uh, but Radagon was a really fun fight. It was like a mono e mono, like straight up duel. It's a really cool fight. I wish it was just that as the final boss <laughs> and not the Elden Beast. Yeah, I would have beat it a lot faster if that were the case. Um, well, and I mean, it just feels like more of a final boss. The Elden Beast just comes out of fucking nowhere, and it's like this thing. What does this thing yeah. even look like? It's like a fucking. It's like a dinosaur. Like, like a. It's like a fucking um, brontosaurus with like no head. Yeah. It's just like a smooth fucking like nub that comes out of its fucking body. It's, it's like so a weird. Diplodocus, you know. Yeah, well, aren't brontosauruses not real? Is that the one or Brachiosaurus? I don't it fucking was. know, dude. <laughs> Nothing's real. Apparently, the, like, there's no fucking co- correlation between. Like uh, depression and, and the chemical imbalance in your brain. So who fucking knows what's real anymore? Uh, uh, Malekith, yeah, I had a hell of a time on him too. Roxo points out. <laughs> I, I beat Malekith on my first try, and I hear he's really hard. So he's really I lucked out. I think really hard. There's I know, you know what I had trouble with the boss right before him, which is the um, the, the, the guy? tree sentinel where you don't have ability to summon and you and uh, you don't have the ability. There's like something else you don't have the ability to do. But you have to fight a tree sentinel like right outside his boss room, and I had so much fucking trouble with that dude because I basically had to get good. Oh, I don't think I had trouble with that one. I had trouble yeah, with the, well, when you, you fought. Actually the, played the game, so when you fought the tiny little dude that's like the assistant, uh, I almost killed him the very first time because he doesn't shut up. He's like talking while I'm like hacking the fuck out of him. And oh well, just... yeah, when you fight Gideon, like I felt so bad too because I like Gideon off here, and like he's just standing there with his arms outstretched, and he's like saying some shit. And it's like, man, don't make me kill him. And it's like, all right, well, I guess. And then I'm just, yeah. Oh, I went in hard. The second I, yeah, I saw that health bar, I'm like, he's dead. But I, I died. And then if you die, he doesn't sit there and do his speech anymore. He goes hard at you. So I'm like, fuck. Uh, I, I beat him the up. first time. Just, again, mimic tear and just rivers of blood. Just, I just, like, he was in the middle of his speech. And I'm like, sorry, buddy, you're done. Like, it's yeah. over. Uh, yeah. It's a really great game. Um, I think my Souls, Elden Seki Soulsborne rankings are as follows for anyone who cares. Um, I'm going to say Dark Souls 2 at the bottom. It's still really great. It's a lot of fun. Um, best main, main main hub area theme. It's pretty good. Uh, second from bottom is probably Dark Souls 3. Good. Got some bullshit fights. Whatever. Third from bottom, I'm going to say Dark Souls 1. Solid. Fourth from bottom, and I think fourth, uh, or third, maybe. I don't know, fourth. I don't fucking know. Uh, Demon Souls remake. If you have a PS5, you need to have this game. It's really good, and there's like what one other game that's exclusive. So what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> um, it's a great remake. It's everything looks amazing. Um, they rebuilt Whoops. it from the ground up. Uh, really solid. Um, then I would say, I would say Elden Ring. After that. And then I would say Bloodborne. And then I would say Sekiro. Okay. It's the best. So those are my official yeah, that's about right. So it's in the top rankings. three. Yeah, it's yeah. really good. It's the best of the old style, of the the Dark Souls style, which has a different feel than Bloodborne and Sekiro. Bloodborne and Sekiro are very fast. These ones are a little more slowed down um, as far as their combat goes. 
I'd still say Bloodborne is is like of the old school Dark Souls style, but even though it is faster, but I still like it better than Elden Ring. Um, but I've only played that in Elden Ring, so I, I, you know, like I played a little bit of Dark Souls one. I didn't, you know, I, I rang like the first bell, but you know, <laughs> it's it's a great game though. Like it's a really great game, and I like all of the games in this series. I really like Dark Souls two. Even like there's a ton of boss fights in Dark Souls two, and honestly, Elden Ring is more like Dark Souls two than any of the other games by far. Uh, the world is huge. There's a fucking the ending is like. You're you're the, these you're in a land of tornadoes with dragons flying around. That's exactly how the end of Dark Souls Two looks. Like Dark Souls Two had a heavy influence on Elden Ring. Um, so even though it's the bottom of my rankings, I really like it. Uh, I think it's a really great game. So and oh, the Elden Ring is just easily like it's easily my game of the year so far. It's going to be really hard to fucking top that shit. Yeah, same. Um, but it is literally the only game from this year I've played. So it's, it's got to take a really good hentai game to knock it off for A4. <laughs> yeah. I know, man. Fuda, Fuda Fix Dine and Dash was just not enough. <laughs> and then, I mean, God of War Ragnarok is coming out, too. And that's probably going to be fucking sick. Oh, fuck. So, I'm ready for that shit. That might be a good contender. But who can say? Yeah, we won't know. Um, so for those who were really wondering, uh, the Brontosaurus... <laughs> Is uh, it was debunked as a um, it was like too closely related to a Patasaurus they were thinking a few years ago, and so um, they you know basically roped it in with a Patasaurus, not Diplodocus. I got mixed up earlier. Um, uh, turns out uh, in 2015. They reseparated them as a as a. Oh really? Yeah. So the land before as time is still valid. Got still it. canon. Yeah. So a Apatos- Patasaurus and Brontosaurus are um, separate enough to be separate genuses uh, as of 2015. Oh. Okay. But I remember when I was a kid, they were like, "Yeah, pff. they talk about Brontosaurus. Brontosaurus ain't a thing anymore, kid." Yeah, it's but like, now apparently it's a thing again. It's like if they reinstated Pluto. I was as a just about planet. to say that. Yeah, <laughs> it's like they took first they took the Brontosaurus and then they took Pluto, <laughs> but I don't think they're giving Pluto back. No, but Brontosaurus was taken away before our time because I remember that being when I was a kid. That's the only reason I remember this shit because I was obsessed yeah. with dinosaurs and I knew that. But I now apparently, very recently, 2015. I didn't know. Seven years been, ago, but... I haven't been obsessed, I guess. I guess not. Not obsessed enough to know your Apatosauruses and your Brontosauruses and your Diplodocuses. Uh, Separate beasts. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So to recap Elden Ring um, real fast. Story. I gave it a 6. A4 gave it a 7. Gameplay. 10s across the board. Graphics and design. I gave it a 10. A4 gave it a 9. Sound and music. 8s across the board. Replayability. 8s across the board. A combined score. <laughs> Or 10s across the board, sorry. Um, A combined score from me of 44 out of 50 and a score of 44. It should be the same. It is. 44 out of 50 from A4. I I took one point off for graphics, but I added added one for story. So, yeah. Which is a whopping 88 out of 100. Nice. For Elden Ring. Solid score. Very well deserved. What does Metacritic have it at? Metacritic... Has. It's got to be higher than that. There's I no think way. It is. I think it's like 96 90. for PS5. Damn. 96, yeah. Uh, I think we're more brutal on the story than most people would be. Yeah. If it weren't for the story, it would be damn near perfect because I only took two points off outside of the story. Um, yeah, but... It's like a 96 on both Xbox and PS5, and then it's a 94 on PC. So I think that's a deserved score. Um, yeah, for sure. So I also think, well, I mean, to be fair to us here, this was a six months later review and not an immediate, you know, heat of the moment. Yeah, we weren't in the passion. We weren't about to stick yeah. it in Elden Ring. Passion? Are you kidding? And I, I stopped playing this game two months ago and I loved it. Yeah. Um. So, games that it's tied with: Killer Queen Black, Uncharted Two: Among Thieves, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Monster Hunter World. I, these all kind of make me feel bad. Uh, Legend of Zelda: <laughs> Metal Gear Solid. South Park, The Stick of Truth, games that it's not as good as OG Doom, Diablo, Battlefield 1, Nier Automata, Dark Souls 3, that's a lie, uh, Sweet Coden <laughs> 2, and Bayonetta, hey, one point below. The scores don't lie. So it is who, the... Who, who reviewed Dark Souls 3 with you? Cameron. Cameron, okay. Wait, what's the highest rated game? 
in the souls? No, in in in, in New Clan history, is it still God of War? Still yeah, God, God of War is the only one with a perfect score. And then it's a three way tie between Ghost of Tsushima, Witcher Three, and Doom Twenty Sixteen. Okay, uh, this is the thirty seventh best game of all time according to Nude Clan, and the seventieth worst game of all time. <laughs> According to New Clan, or 69th, something like that. Nice. <laughs> Bottom 100, losers. 88 out of 100. <laughs> Congrats. Um, yeah, so awesome. Yeah, I've been wanting to review this for a long time. I beat it forever ago. I know. Um, when, Zach, I, when I knew Zach wasn't going to, I'm like, let's just do the fucking review because Joe's not going to play it and Zach's not going to finish it. So, yeah, uh, I'm glad we finally got to it because, like, I. This literally derailed everything I was doing. Like, I was, I had mm-hmm. responsibilities with Ultima. And other things, and I wasn't doing them because I was playing this. Dude, I lost all, all of time. May to this fucking game. Yeah, it's gone. All the, I lost like yeah. months to this game. Just every I, mean, I, I played it. I played it a bunch in the other months too, but like May was when I really went like, okay, I'm gonna fucking beat this thing. Like it's happening. Yeah. Um, Someone won a uh, a drawing, and we didn't announce it. I believe. Oh yeah. Um, in July. Yeah, the uh, I guess August technically, it, whichever way you want to put it. Um, Charlie Rudy, congratulations! You have won another game. I know you haven't claimed the last few games that you've won, but hey, if you want an, if you want one of them, uh, check out the list. It's in the Discord channel under um, giveaway games. So check that out if you want one of the ones that's in there. Let us know, and we'll send it your way. Sweet. Um, if not, then we'll just fucking keep it forever, and uh, you know, no problem. If you listeners want to join the Discord, the links are in the description of every episode on YouTube, which you can find at youtube.com slash gaming, where you can see the video versions of these podcasts if you're listening to the audio version right now, um, or you're watching the video version and this is completely redundant. Yeah. Uh, check us out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash gaming. Um, if you guys have Amazon Prime, you get a free sub, so why not throw us a couple bucks? Two fifty. We get half of it. We get half. Twitch gets half. Everybody's happy. Uh, also, should mention the reason we had the drawing is because of patreon.com slash nude clan gaming. Uh, if you, every, what is it, every dollar you you give to the Patreon gets you a drawing. Gets you one ticket into the drawing, yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. I worded it wrong. Um, so, yeah, it's also going to your podcaster because Zach's not here, so I have to say it. <laughs> yeah, man. You can also vote for the polls that we do on Twitter at nude clan podcast. You can follow me at Joseph DeGolier. You can follow A4 at A4 Extreme. I me, thought he was going to go first. Me at UFF Podcast. And uh, Zach at B Grixis. That's if right. Wanna, if you want to talk to the guys, I'm here. <laughs> uh, do we want to do like a draw or a, 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 some kind of an offshoot uh, vote for some random do you game? Do a forced entry right now? <sighs> we could. Is that what you're saying? I mean, we have one that's you guys are we're waiting on for you guys. Well, yeah, yeah we have a review. It's going take but... a while for that one, just because of Endwalker. So. We could still know what we're playing next without. Let me see. Okay, let, yeah, you know what? Let me pull up the thing. Well, let's look at it. All right, it's going to be out for seven days. Um, guys, get over there. Hit yeah, the we, poll. we did not record this, so. Oh, okay. I'm recording it, technically. Well, we'll, but... we'll fire out the podcast again. All right, so we couldn't get a hold of Zach, so Joe just got two picks for A4 and I. We changed our mind. It's going to be A4 and I, because Zach and... Joe currently have a game that's due. We're going to do one of these four games. Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo on the PlayStation 1. Eternal Darkness on the GameCube. Space Channel 5 on the Dreamcast. And our final choice, Earthworm Jim on the Super Nintendo. Guys, get over to twitter.com slash gaming or podcast. Nudeclan podcast, sorry. <laughs> Um, and go vote on our next game. Uh, yeah, a month ago. Yeah, a month ago. It's already too late. Uh, but <laughs> by this time, so you'll you can go know. see the answer. Yeah, I. You know, if you're watching this live, go check it out. Yeah, and we will have let everyone know on the Discord. So you know what? If you want to vote, you better be active on our stuff. Yeah, there that's you go. Really the end all There's your all. problem. But uh, that will be the nominees um, for me and Afer. So get out there. Sweet. And get out the vote. And uh, guys, um, yeah, follow us at New Clan Podcast on Twitter. 
You can see the shows live uh, at twitch.tv slash gaming. You can um, join our Discord. The links will be in the description. And you can, uh, if you can please, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, see what we do with it in the future. Hopefully hopefully we can do some fun stuff with it. Uh, YouTube.com slash gaming. Uh, I believe is the URL. If it's not, yeah. just search Nude Clan Gaming, and you should be able to find it, uh, along with some uh, pornography. Uh, and um, <laughs> you can follow me at Joseph Vigolier. Me at UFF Podcast. Me at A4 Extreme. And Zach at B Grix, Brix, whatever. B Grixis. I feel like we already did this, but yeah. We did. Uh, oh, <laughs> shoot. Okay, well, then we'll just see you later. Yeah. Live always in the nude. Walk with your rivers of blood hell high. Fuck off.